Okay, in Job chapter 15, we had the angry rebuttal from Eliphaz. Who do you think you are, Job? How dare you? Chapter 16 of Job. Then Job answered and said, I can only say this like that wrestling tag team. Doing your turn. And now, as we get further and further, we'll see that we talked about James talked about the patience of Job. And one of the patients is dealing with his friends. And this is exactly what James is talking about. Along with all the destruction that's happened to Job, he hasn't lost his mind. And these men are not helping Job. Look here. Verse 2. I have heard many such things. What? Chapter 15. Ready? Miserable comforters are ye, y'all. Now, Job told them in, in previous chapter, you're a bunch of quacks. You're physicians without value. Eliphaz comes in, who do you think you are? We're aged, we're gray hair, we're older than your father. We ought to know. And Job says, you know what? I've heard your talk. And you know what I think? You're miserable comforters. That miserable, miserable is the first time that word shows up. Interesting where these words show up for the first time. So Job does not give no relief. Job does not cave in to these men. He just comes out with the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. You get offended in the truth? That's tough. If it's the truth, you get right. And a couple of chapters ago, Job's like, this. be quiet. Don't say anything else. And Job finishes words, chapter 14 and chapter 15. Eliphaz starts talking. Now watch what he says, verse 3. Shall vain words, empty words, <laughs> have an end? Are you guys going to ever stop? That's what he's saying. You've said nothing. We're going to quit this? We're going to stop this? Or what emboldeneth, that's the only time that word shows up, thee, thee, probably Eliphaz, that's the one just talked, that thou answerest. What gives you the right and what do you have to say to my rebuttal? What gave you the power? I, Job. Now watch this. Now this is Job's attitude to his three friends. We're trying to help Job. Job has the honesty and integrity that proclaim. Listen, this is what I feel of you guys. I also can speak as you do. Ye, all of them. If your soul were in my soul's stead, misery, troubles, problems, death, loss, financial ruin, pain, sorrow, and suffering. Now, if it was one of you, or if it was you guys, I could heap up words against you that's what they've been doing. And shake my head at you. And you've seen that. You know, there's no use talking to him. Not going to listen. Joe's like, I could do the same thing. If you were me and I was you. What gives you the idea to talk? Now watch what Job said. But I, Job, would strengthen you with your, with my mouth. I'm going to uphold you. I'm going to help you. And the moving of my lips should assuage. That's the only time that word shows up. That's uh, to go away, wear away. Your grief. Listen, if, if you were in my condition, I was in your condition. My lips and my mouth would help you re be relieved. You guys have made it worse. And many Christians open up their mouth, oh, I'm trying to help you, and you just do more damage. And you've sinned against God. These three men of Job are going to have to bring an offering before Job by the time we get to Job 42. You're not helping anybody, you're making it worse. And you're not going to listen to anybody else, so God will have to intervene, God will have to put you to the judgment, and would hate or stubble. For the Christian. 
plain and simple. Listen, James gives us practically a whole chapter on the tongue, and it's, it's evil, it's out of the fires of hell, and listen, you can't have sweet, and you can't have uh, bitter water. Though I speak, verse 6, my grief is not a sway. You guys have not helped me. It has not gotten any better. And though I forbear, I haven't said any. What am I he? All right, ease, that's the first time that shows up. All right, we've been talking. We've gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It has not gotten better. I'm in no comfort. Matter of fact, I'm probably angrier now. I'm probably more upset. You made things worse. Physicians of no value and your miserable comforters. That's what Job has said. But now he, God, has made me weary. It's going on. Time is passing. It hasn't gotten better for Job. And thou has made desolate all my company. There's no one there but those three men of Job. Everybody's left Job. We don't know what happened to his wife. His children are dead. We don't know about those servants. But it looks like the story is there's Job and his three friends, and I don't know when Eliphaz shows up. Uh, not Eliphaz. Uh, who? Why? I think his name is. I don't know when he shows up. But he's been there for a while when we get to him. Job says, I'm all by myself, and you guys are just making it worse. And I think Job would be in better hands in chapter 3 if they just let him talk and say, Job, you know, chapter 4, uh, four you are in a great pain, but let's have a prayer meeting. I mean, that's not going to solve anything, but we talk to God. Job, we're going to go home, and we're going to pray. We're going to go back to our church. We're going to put you on the prayer list. You need us, give us a call. But all this mouth, all this talk has done no good. Job doesn't know any better what's going on. And we're going to see in chapter 16, he's going to outright blame God. And we we know, because we have Job 1 and 2, we know it's not God. And yet it is God, because God's trying to attack Job with his sins. And the devil is trying to attack Job because he's living right. And so when you cross that fine line, it's God's fault. It may not be because the devil told David to number Israel, and then God told David to number Israel. Well, what's the fine line? Is that a contradiction? It's not a contradiction. It's a very, very, very fine line that we ought not to blame God or the devil. And when we come to troubles and problems, the best thing we can question God is people say, you don't have a right to question God. Yes, you do. Say, God, whatever circumstance am I in, how can I glorify you and how can I come out of this situation for your honor and glory. For Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And Lord God, help me with patience. Help me with long-suffering. Lord, you put that Holy Spirit in me. Those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And what the trials and tribulations I'm in, I am going to need them. That's the way to handle it. That ain't going to relieve you. So now we're going to look at God. Verse 8. And thou... Got to be God. And thou has filled me with wrinkles. Worry lines. Anger. And it could be the three friends. Which is a witness against me. I'm aging before your eyes. I'm getting older. And my leanness. That's the first time that word shows up. Rising up in me. Beareth witness to my face. Now Job listening... Look at chapter 15, verse 27. Because he covers his faith with fatness and make his collops, that's pieces of flesh, on the, the fat of his flanks. You know, Job is a big, fat, hungry, you know, hungry man. He overeats. Job says, Thou, God, has filled me with wrinkles, which is a witness against me, and my leanness, I, I, I'm not fat, rising up in me, Beareth witness to my face to what Eliphaz said. Look at my face. It's not healthy. Here, look. Give me that pox script. 
So I'm going to assume that Job is not fat. He has been swollen. <laughs> His body is swelling and swollen from them boils. He says, I'm lean. I'm skinny. My leanness. He, God, teareth me with his wrath. God is angry with me. That's where Job's gotten now. This is the anger of God. Who hateth me. Now, we've read Job 1 and 2. Does God hate Job? No. Now, some people would think, yeah, after you've got the devil in this. But, you know, it's the love of God. You know, God, I said this before, if I didn't, I'm going to say now. God had enough faith in Job that, hey, go get him. And you think this is a long, drag-out conversation. It will get Job to repent. Some people, it takes longer than others for them to get right with God. But if you get right, boom. If you take that chastisement of God say, Oh God, I don't want to do this no more. I am tired of that beating. Let's move on. He gnashes. That's the first time that word shows up. And Jesus references this word as something that men do in the darkness of the burning fire of hell. Where they'll be wailing and gnashing the teeth. Jesus never preached about hell. That's what he describes hell. Can you imagine a, a whaley where there's no tears because you can't get water from your eyes to cool your tongue? And you are grinding your teeth. Wait a minute. Gnashing of teeth? You have your teeth in hell. Hey, wait, wait, wait. I can't. I got dentures. You're forever wearing away your teeth, but they won't wear away as you gnash he matches upon me with his teeth. My enemies, <laughs> his friends, sharpened his eye upon me. In the next couple chapters, you're going to see Jesus. They have gaped. That's the first time that word shows up. And it only shows up in Psalms 22, 13. Two places gaped. They have gaped upon me with their mouth. They have smitten me upon the cheek reproachfully. Now, I don't think they're punching Job in the face. But they will for Jesus. And they will pull that beard out. They have gathered themselves together against me. And for Job's three friends, that's what I, I think they probably came with good intentions. That's not their... For Jesus, they wanted Jesus destroyed, the Bible said. They wanted Jesus eliminated. You know, when Jesus did good and healed somebody, they got counsel again. How can we destroy him? God, Jesus, here we go. God has delivered me to the ungodly. Now for Job, who is that? He's three friends. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Ungodly, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, watch this. And turn me over unto the hands of the wicked. Alright, that is the devil. So Job is acknowledging God and the devil are in charge here. Job has got a point of chapter 1 and 2. Get that. But notice he says, again, the double application. God has delivered me over the ungodly and turned me over into the hand of the wicked. Now, Let's look at something. Chapter 15, we got to see this. Chapter 20. Chapter 15, verse 20. He's answering Eliphaz. The wicked man travaileth with pain all his day. Remember I, I said last night, we're going to look at Job as Job. Eliphaz is saying Job's in hell. Job, you're going to hell. You know how Job answers that? I'm the wicked man, I'm going to hell. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. God, all right, here's God, has delivered me unto the ungodly and turned me over unto the hand of the... He's, he's saying, Eliphaz, you're the wicked one. I'm not the wicked one. You guys are. And God has brought you three to destroy me. 
Now, can you just picture the tempers of Ellie Fast is sitting there listening to this? Job is taking the words of Ellie Fast and spitting them right back in his face. Go, Job. I was at ease. I had my family, I had my goods, I was doing well. But he, God, has broken me asunder. Servant came, you know, the, this army came, took him away. The fire from heaven came down, burnt everything up. And they, they, this army came and destroyed everybody. And there was this whirlwind and, and, and you got the boils and your wife came in. Does that change that integrity? Curse God and die. He, God, has also taken me by the neck and shaken me to pieces. And set me upon his mark. God has me marked. His archers, God's archers, compass me round about. I'm surrounded. He cleaveth my reins asunder and does not spare. God is beating me. He pours out my gall upon the ground. That would be your gallbladder. God has ripped me open and just the bitterness, oh, it's just coming out. Uh, just a little note there, doves don't have a gallbladder. And the type of the Holy Spirit is the dove. Now we're, we're going to start seeing, okay, this is how Job is suffering. He breaketh me with a breach upon breach. Here's a breach and here's another breach. He runs upon me like a giant. Well, there's a story of David and Goliath long before it happened. So there are giants in the land in Job's time. So who built those pyramids and who did those things that people can't understand? I'm going to tell you outright, probably the giants. I'll even go so far as to say UFOs. You believe in them? I believe in UFOs more than I believe in someone going to the moon. I, Job, have sold sackcloth upon my skin. And defiled my horn in the dust. Horn in the Bible is strength. Like a horn of a goat. That, you know, goats will battle it out. Deer battle it out with their antlers. And the one that's got the powerful horns or the antlers, I mean, he gets the, he gets the, the females of the flock. Heard. And I'm thinking here that sold that sackcloth upon my skin. I believe he's wearing sackcloth. And is that some kind of bandages? But he now has, you know, sackcloth is very uncomfortable. I can't picture it as a bandage. And that in order to get it stayed on the skin, he has a sew. I don't think he's sewing it to his skin. I think he's getting, somehow. I mean, remember, they don't have band-aids and all bandages back then. I think we're going to see how Job really is. My face is foul. That's the first time that word shows up with weeping. Read what we're talking about when Job speaks. He is in tears. Agony of defeat. Agony of loss. Agony his wife is mad at him. Agony these three guys won't let it up. Agony he's in pain. And so if he's crying in tears, his eyes are red and they're swollen. And on my eyelids, that's the first time that shows up. I live, is the shadow of death. I'm not, he's not saying I'm going to. He's not, I wish I was dead. I wish. I, he's saying, listen, death is. This is going to drive me to death. That's where he is now. I'm going to die with this disease I have, and he doesn't. Not for the injustice. That's the only time that word shows up. Not for any injustice of mine hands. Well, see that, see that self-righteousness there? How can I do any injustice? It's coming out. God's getting out of them. All right, here we go with another one. Ready? Mark your, mark your notes here as soon as I find where we were. And my prayer is pure. That's Job speaking, right? Chapter 15, verse 4. Eliphaz. Rebuking Job, the liar, yet thou castest off fear, 
and restraineth prayer before God. You don't pray to God no more. Job says, my prayer is pure. My, he's praying to God. O earth, cover not thou my blood, and let my cry have no place. And now, behold, my witness is in heaven. God knows what's going on. The angels know what's going on. Somebody knows. I may not know. These guys may not know. Somebody knows. My witness is in heaven. And my record is on high. Look at Job saying that there's a record with Job. And he don't understand, but we're gonna, I'm going to bring it up today. Job is saying there's a file cabinet in heaven. I'm old school. And you open up the J, J O, J O B. You pull it out, and God will pull out the book. Revelation 20. Okay, this is a joke. There's a full account of Job. Today, you want to bring it up with the, you know, there's a computer file. You type in Job and out of the cloud. <laughs> it's not going out of the cloud, out of heaven. So Job is acknowledging God and Job is telling us the first book of the Bible. God keeps a record. And Job has never read Chronicles. Job has never read the book of Numbers. He says there's a book of records. God is a record keeper. So you learn much from the book of Job. My friends, I wonder who that is, <coughs> scorned me. <laughs> there you go. I think he's praying to God right now and rebuilding. You guys, you're scorning me. You're making fun of me. You're harassing me. But my eye poureth out tears unto God. Well, you know, I'm praying to God. My prayer is pure and I'm crying to God. I got tears to God. Don't tell me I'm not praying to God. Tell me. Oh, that one might plead for a man with God. Now, who is that? That's the advocate. That's the mediator. That's Jesus Christ. The people in the Old Testament look forward to Calvary. How come he doesn't say Jesus then? Because he doesn't know who Jesus is. And yet, many, 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 many years later, we're going to read John. It's going to tell us, Paul is going to write to Timmy and say, we have a mediator. We have an advocate. We have Jesus Christ seated at the right hand of the Father, making intercessions for us. Job didn't know that. We do. As a man pleads for his neighbor. Yeah, you know I mean, you go right back over to 1 John chapter 2, verse 1. There's that advocate. There's that lawyer. And you know what he's saying about his three friends? These guys ain't it. <laughs> uh, Your Honor, uh, be respect. Your Honor, yes, sir. My lawyer is here. Yeah, can I fire him? <laughs> can I get a holy and righteous lawyer like Christians will have one day? <laughs> That's kind of funny, isn't it? Remember, what Job said earlier. He says, "He says I speak to God, and my neighbor speaketh up." They scorn God, and he says they're scorning me. When a few years are come, if we go back to life again, then I shall go the way, hence I shall not return. There's death. Now, he's not asking for death. He's saying, you know what? Death is going to come. I'm going to die. This death is coming. It's all around me. And now he's positive because he's giving himself a few years. Yeah, he's getting, all right, I'm going to survive. Can we get rid of these guys? Lord, uh, uh, Lord, can we have a light bulb for these guys? <laughs> Give me one of my sons back. I mean, and the thing is, I'm going to say there are people who are outright rude and mean. We met one at Walmart the other day. And there are people who think they're doing right. They want to do right. But it's needless. And we got to be careful. And the thing I learned is, and I've been taught, and I don't remember if this is going to school or probably going to school. One of my classes is all right. The Bible says in Matthew, Jesus says, "Go to the person with fault." 
And he says, he goes, I got a lesson before you do that. He says, first of all, you got to check out the moat in your eye, number one. You got problems, take care of your problems first. Number two, you pray. Number three, you set up, okay, I'm going to go talk to this person on such and such day. Number four, you pray. Number five, the day comes along, you're going to speak to him, you pray. And you keep praying, you keep praying, you keep praying. Because it might be, and this is what this is what the class was, it might be that you're just wrong. Job's friends are wrong. Now, their doctrine, we can apply the doc, document, I mean, the, the, the doctrine with these guys, we can apply it all the way. But we can't apply it to Job. We can't. That'd be like me going on the street to preach it. Oh, the, you know, the wonderfulness of, you know, how gloryful things will be in New Jerusalem for a bunch of lost people. It's doctrinally correct. I can go preach, you know, the signs of the times. I can go preach the tribulation. I can go preach the churches going out before the church. That has nothing to do with a lost man. I've got to deal with a lost man as a lost man. They've got to deal with Job who's suffering in trials and tribulations and somehow, in some way, comforting. I mean, did any of them say, Joe, can I get those boils on your back? Even Elihu doesn't come anymore. Well, we'll get there. I mean, Elihu's had it with all these guys. And Elihu's sent to show you're all sinners. That's what Elihu does. Elihu's made with salt. When he rub that salt in the wounds. Let me get you guys correct. But I don't think any of these guys, by their character, with Joe, let me get you back there. You got a couple sores back there. Here, let me hold that bandage. I don't get that from these three guys. And I don't think I, I, chapter markings are wonderful and great. They're not inspired, but they're inspired. I don't think there's like silence. I think boom. Eliphaz Job jumps right in there. And no, then we're gonna get like an and then we're gonna get to see. All right, Job speaks in 17 in chapter 18, then answer build that. There's no way. The Bible says in a few months. Within time, the Bible will tell you a period of time. Then the answer build that. And, you know, as soon as Job is finished, you're done. My turn. Like I said, it's like that tag team in wrestling. My turn. And it goes on and on and on and on. Don't be like that. 